Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's a Friday Flex edition and it's time for Off the Press. And Mr. Chide Johnston, Senior Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, is joining us uh, here in Lagos. Good morning to you, Chief Chide Johnston. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good day to our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Pleasure to have you. Let's go straight to the Punch newspaper, which leads with subsidy protests. FG labor talks collapse. NLC begins strike August 14. The writers there, why labor made a U-turn on agreements reached with Tinubu on subsidy removal. And the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, LCCI, demand more palliatives from FG NLC gives reason for ending protest. Well, details of that you can find on page 2 and 22 of the Punch newspaper. Judah Johnson, how would you describe the situation that's unfolding between FG and the organized labor? Well, um, um, since they went on the protest, you mean... I mean, on the protest. Yeah, it's important to know that then we were putting the cart before the horse with respect to petroleum subsidy instead of putting the horse before the cart. There are a series of engagement the president should have had before making that pronouncement on removal of fuel subsidy, particularly petroleum subsidy. Those series of engagement is the engagement we are having after that has been done, the deed has been done. However, no matter what you do, you still come to the negotiating table. I think that it's important in the interest of the country, in the interest of the people, for both the government and labor to shift ground. Shift ground in a sense that there must be concession that government must be willing to make, and there must be concession that labor must be willing to take, so as to have a common ground with respect to strike or no strike. Because I am a serious advocate against strike. Strike does not solve problem. Rather, it worsen the economic situation of the people as well as affecting the productivity of of the nation. There are other there are other things that could be done instead of strike, like what they did not destroying the gate of the National Assembly. However, picketing members of the National Assembly, picketing ministers once they are elected, and picketing various agencies of government Rendered in incapacitating them from functioning, at least, at least while other people can go about their normal business. I think that would be a better, a better, a better approach. Better approach in the sense that uh, it is directed at um, public officials, public officials who are far away from reality, because the reality of on ground is that majority of those that are in charge of our affairs in this country are far away from reality. I'm not sure there's any one of them that has used their money to, to, to buy fuel in the last 25 years. Just look across the length and breadth of, of those that are taking decisions with respect to what affects our daily, our daily survival in Nigeria. There's yeah. none of them. Okay, there's well, none. Yeah, but, well, let, let's, let's move away from that aspect of that uh, protest to what happened between the federal government. I mean, you had... President Tinubu met with these people. He met with them. They talked. And, of course, we, we know of the court injunction that the federal government sought to use to gag the organized labor from going on that protest. So they went on that protest. They had the discussion with the president. And then the president has gone to court to sue them for, for contempt of court, for going on that strike despite the injunction that was gotten to stop them from going on the strike. Let, let's talk about that. Well, um, are you surprised by that? You, no. You recall, you recall the approach of the Ministry of Labor and Productivity to also strike under Barry's administration, you recall. And then I don't know which cause will stop people from going about their fundamental human rights. The court cannot legislate on what is a constitutional right. The right of association, the right of peaceful assembly, the right of protest, the right to petition government, they are fundamentally inherent in the constitution that courts cannot and should not rule on such matters. 
when <coughs> when such matters are brought before them. But we have a situation whereby uh, the judiciary needs needs a proper a proper orientation and a proper a proper a proper um, cleansing. That's that's my thing because the right to protest, the right to petition your government, the right for peaceful assembly, the inherent right that is just like a court legislating that the election should be stopped on a day that has been pronounced by INEC. There's no court that can stop a day. For example, INEC pronounced that 2027 election will take place in December 2027, 2026, before uh, not March, not April 2027. That's the day. It, there's no court that can shift it because inherent in that is the power given to us. So it's a constitution, it's a constitutional matter. So I don't know, as far as I'm concerned, the government have always engaged in double speak, and that's why they've lacked trust, and that's why they've lacked respect from labor. You cannot be negotiating with one person and going through the back end to secure court judgment, come court judgment to am strong. Trump strong them. It doesn't. It doesn't really make any sense. And so that talk has collapsed. Is that and so that talk has collapsed. And yeah, NLC is to begin point, strike point. August 14. That's that's why you see that NLC said they are they are they are they are, they are, they are, they are beginning to strike August 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 14. 14. So for me, the, there's no issue you solve with litigation. Every issue is solved with mediation. This type of particular issue is solved with mediation and not litigation. Both. Sometimes people in charge of adversity think that we are still in a military regime. <coughs> the tactics of military military regime in dealing with labor. So I'm even after 24 years of um, 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 civilian administration on our path towards a democratic um, society, some some antecedent of military vestiges are still present in our democratic life. Okay, well, in a related development, we have right on top there on the masthead, FG begins no work, no pay for striking doctors. Is that now, a good way to go? Well, um, they tried that. You recall that if, if no work, no pay for striking doctors. It becomes very, very instructive. You recall what happened in Lagos State with respect to that young doctor that lost a life. I've asked people to take a, to take a trip, to take a trip, and visit the hospital, look at the working condition of doctors, look at the number of patients they have to attend to, look at their the working, look at their offices and look at their residence. And then you 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 expect somebody that has not been given some degree of comfort to provide degree of comfort and ease to ease the pain of the people to address their medical issue. So you can't give what you have not been given. As far as I'm concerned, this idea of no work, no pay. They will, they, will, they will come with that. They will threaten us with that. But I can recall, I can recall that before the Senate president was sworn in, when he was having an issue with the EFCC, he traveled abroad. He secured uh, a, 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 whether an injunction or whatever that he needs to go for treatment abroad. The president himself goes for treatment abroad. We are not too sure whether the vice president will go for treatment abroad and then the secretary to the federal government. So they can... They can they can implement such policies because when they have medical condition, they are not even making use of medical facilities we have in Nigeria. So they are patrons of foreign medical services. So they, 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 <coughs> Sorry. The, 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 the reality on ground is that if they patronize such services, one, they will have first hand experience of what is really going on, what is really going on in the medical sector, particularly in the health sector. And then the needed intervention can be done to address this issue. We have fantastic doctors, but the working condition, just take a trip. It's clear. Just take a trip. Make use of public health facilities. And then you, 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 you weep. No doubt the investigations into this will unravel a lot of things. And then also making one wonder why these investigations never you know, we're never done before this sort of tragedy took place. Right down, still on the front page of the Punch newspaper, you have Delta government indicts Lagos Hospital over doctor's death in elevator. That incident that you just well, alluded to. The girl is from Delta well, State, obviously. If I, if I were to be the family of that doctor, we sue the state government. Mm -hmm. We sue the state government, and then we sue them so that to foster such occurrences in the future. 
um, it's, it's an avoidable debt, you know. Very the avoidable. It was, it was a mechanical fault, and then um, later the wife said it was spiritual, spiritual, spiritual attack, and then that's the level to which uh, those that are, are are given the mantle of public public administration. Can you come back to that public. again? Who did you say said it was a spiritual attack? Uh, allegedly, the wife of the of the of the governor said it was spiritual attack that the lady. It was a spiritual attack that um, that that killed the lady. So you can imagine that level of thinking, that level of thought pattern, guiding decision making, guiding policy trust of administration. When somebody is attributing basic, you know what? I travel to Benin. I travel to Enugu by road because my flight was cancelled, and I was approaching this river very close to Benin. And everybody inside the bus I was in were, were beginning to pray that this is dead river, dead river, that uh, this river sucked blood. And I was laughing. They were looking at me. I said, how would you say this is dead river? You know what the white people, they call this a dead trap. I said, whoever is responsible for constructing this over, uh, this bridge over this river does not have a sense in the right. You can't be, you can't, you can't be approaching a big river going downward. When the bridge, you are approaching it now, I said the probability of vehicles running into the river is very, very high. So mm. it's, a, it's a construction problem. Mm. It's a problem of design. They mm. don't need any suit here. There's no need for witches and wizards to tell you that cars and big trucks will run into this river because there's a major engineering design problem. Mm. So it's the same thing we have. You can look at the thinking that guides, that guides, that guides public policy formation. What, what have they been looking at? What have they been looking at Concerning that lift, how many government offices are the lift functioning? You know, I, I, I had to respond to the tweet of the governor with respect to that mechanical fault to say that, well, all he needs to do is to take a trip around Lagos and he will see a lot of roads going through quote unquote construction failure because the majority of the roads have collapsed. Hmm. Because the he, he, majority of the roads have collapsed, so that too is suffering from construction failure. But it's not construction failure, it's the aptitude of those who have given responsibility to manage the affairs of our of our nation to manage the affairs of our state. Amazing. All right. Just before we leave the punch, the punch is rich this morning, as always. Uh, let's look at this. Um, Niger, Tinubu Wu's Libya, Algeria against Junta. Well, um, what type of government do you have? After the West succeeded in removing and exterminating Gaddafi, what... What type of government do you have in Libya? Exactly. Uh, what type of government do you have in Algeria with its own internal internal crisis after battling the, the extremists for, for close to two decades and then they have some relative peace in Algeria? You think Algeria will be interested in intervening in, 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 in Niger, in Niger, which has been the, the, the flashpoint of different types of uh, interest group and terrorist groups in in in, 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 in West Africa. So as far as I am concerned, I think what we need to do is to is to engage is to engage those that have that have planned the coup and ask them what's their plan towards move towards democracy. I'm not in support of coup in any in any case. Mm -hmm. However, if you look at it, um, in Africa we have seen different types of it coup does not really happen through the barriers of the gun. When you when you when you when you when you conduct election and the election does not go according to the to, 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 to lead them guidelines process and procedure that's a coup when 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 the constitution makes a provision for you to serve two terms and you are trying to amend the constitution to serve a third term that's a coup you saw what you saw what alasin watara did in coup d'ivoire you saw what uh, this it took the intervention of au and the president when he before he was sworn in for the president of uh, Senegal not to embark on a third term. You know, all of these, these are the issues that um, ECOWAS and EU to address. They should address. If Rwanda is fantastic. Rwanda is wonderful. But look at Paul Kagame. Paul Kagame came in, he changed the constitution. And then from serving two terms to be. So those are contract when a coup is when you subvert democratic government. It could be through the barrel of the gun. And it could be to not comply with the electoral act that governs your electoral processes. So, as far as I'm concerned, will the EU and Africa, and Af African Union and ECOWAS should look at this and then intervene before this various internal crisis of this nation snowball into 
into military coup, counter coup, or different types of what have you. Look and at what it, is happening in Syria. Look at the charges that have been brought against the opposition in Syria alone mm -hmm. by the by by the government. See, so these are areas where they need to intervene. It's yeah, important. it would appear it's that ECOWAS, it would appear that ECOWAS and AU do not step in when members abuse the rule of law in their countries. And when they are caught in corruptions or when they are seen to be corrupt and messing things up in their countries, but only jump in when there is a coup. Isn't that an unfortunate development? Making yeah, the that's, bodies that's, nothing short of a uh, toothless bulldog. They've lost respect. Yeah, that, 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 then what you, when you are even talking about their coerce, when you close border, by their coerce treaty, there should be freedom of movement. You, you don't need a visa to move through West Africa by 90. 90 days. There's no single currency since ECOWAS has been formed. Uh, rather, uh, the fr Francophone countries relate with, with, with France until, until lately, which they begin to break away from. The, the, the Anglophone countries re relate individually. The Francophone countries relate collectively with France, but the Anglophone countries relate individually with Britain and other, other, other actors and other stakeholders. As far as uh, I am concerned, there cannot be political integration without economic integration. That's why it's called economic community. Now, what binds them together is the economy. Do they have that? What we have is um, EPOAS, economic, uh, no, it's not economic, it's, a politic, it's, it's political community, PICOAS. Let me put that, political community of West Africa. Because, you know, the economy, the, from, from the name, is economic community. Do we have an economic community? Is there a single currency? Now, is there freedom of movement of people within... Yeah. Is there a trade a trade exchange between this the, 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 this this country in this in this community? Even before you before you thought of EU, before the European Union formed European Union, look at what the European Union did and how they came up with a single currency. Hmm. What have we done concerning that in Africa that we have a single currency to strengthen our economy, to re in, to increase our bargaining chip with with foreign countries, to also in international trade. To ensure that we have we, we, uh, we, we strengthen our, our own currency with, with 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 other currency competing with the dollar competing with with pounds and competing with yen, but we don't we are not looking in that direction. What they just do is an association of friends. They gather either every month or every six months or every what have you. They just gather, they eat, and they have talk shop and not workshop. They, mm. they, they they talk and talk and talk without coming up with strategic blueprint to solve. West African problem. That's a good way to sum it up. Look, look talk at, shop and not workshop. Yeah, exactly. So just look at just look at the West West African corridor. Look at that corridor. How important that corridor is to international trade. You know, is that corridor you use to connect Europe <coughs> and that same corridor you use, via the international waterways. Via, via the international the corridor you use to connect Europe, the corridor you use to connect America, the corridor you use to connect Asia. So you could see how strategic important that that corridor that corridor is, and you could you could look at that corridor even when we are talking in terms of slave trade. Which corridor was heavily involved in slave trade? Hmm. All right. Start. Okay, so um, let, let's move forward because of time uh, to the Nation newspaper. The nation leads with the Ganduje pledges reform fairness to reposition APC. Of course, he's become the national chairman of the APC. Well, um, uh, unfortunately, the party did not throw the line of the zoning arrangement it had with respect to the national offices and elective offices. By this arrangement, the North Central Mission changed because the chair, national chairman that was removed, uh, that resigned, that resigned, um, was from the North Central, was from Nasara State. You have expected that APC will have looked for a chairman in in either Plitu, Nasarawa, Niger, and the rest of it, but they went to North Central um, to pick to pick the national chairman, which I think is against the principle, the principle of fairness, the principle of zoning arrangement, which the party claimed while they were appoint, while they were appointing the national officers of the of the National Assembly. Um, the principal officer of the National Assembly for the Party. Well, Ganduje is there. It's, it shouldn't, the, the, the election of Ganduje as national chairman shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. 
before you can become the national chairman of APC, you must be a former governor. So it's the cult of former governors. That's, that's just the reality of APC. From inception to date, everybody that has been the national chairman of APC had been a former governor. From BC Akonde, BC Akonde to Oyegun, Oyegun, Oyegun to, to Adam Soshemole, Adam Soshemole to Mai Malabuni, Mai Malabuni to uh, Adamu Abdullahi, Adamu Abdullahi now to Cambridge. One of the things also instructive is that the only person that actually completed its, its I think it's um, Oyegun that, that actually, um, BC Akonde, let me see. To my memory, Bisi Agonde seems to be the one that ran the party without running into one crisis or the other. Every other one, every other party chairman had, was bedeviled with one form of crisis or the other. Oshomali did not complete his tenure. My Malabudi wanted to extend his tenure as the chairman of the Kadika committee forever. He, spent, he ended up spending more than two years, close to two years, as the acting national chairman, combining that office with that of the governor. So let's hope and see what Gandhi will do with with respect to managing managing the party, managing the free free nerves within 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 the within the party, and be able to put their party in house in in, in order. But it's too early. It's not up to you where the national chairman, and national secretary were were, were elected. And you know, sometimes when you I look at our political parties, what just comes to mind is some others do have them. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the bottom line is that the some the mothers do have are, them. The political parties across board don't have respect for the constitution of their party. They don't follow lay down rules and procedure in picking their 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 their. their, their. Now, usually, I have said it, and I've said it over time. APC has never had an elective convention for the national chairman. The chairman, the national chairman, is always coronated. He's always coronated. Adam Sushimale was coronated. John. John Oyegun was coronated. Oyegun, it was Oyegun and Ikimi that was fighting, and Ikimi thought he could get the national, the national chairman, national chairman. They had called the battle for the national chairman when BC Akonde stepped down as acting national chairman of APC. And uh, what you also have was a convention that was used to elect um, Ganduji. No, it was. <coughs> so there is a need Sorry. for them to call a special convention to ratify his election, but. This is usually, it's usually, even before the announcement of the national chairman, it works on the streets. What you hear behind the wall will be very, very clear that this will be the next, the next national chairman. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, nah, we saw the handwriting yeah, nah, on that. the wall. Exactly. In fact, the wall is even too, uh, it's just a, uh, it's, it's a little, uh, you saw the handwriting in the car. It was written. <laughs> It was really, it's was interesting. Really it's interesting. You 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 went deep to mention the likes of uh, Chief Tommy Kimi and you know those during his time. You you you're just taking me down memory lane because we grew up knowing those people. Where are they now? Do you have any idea uh, what's happening with Chief Tommy well, Kimi? I think, I think Tommy Kimi, as a result of the treatment he received, I think Tommy Kimi is in PDP now. I I think I I'm I'm not too sure. I think he's in. I think it's in PDP now. You ask you as John Oyegun, you recall John Oyegun was given the responsibility of screening the presidential the presidential candidate. Um, uh, in fact, Oyegun too did not complete his tenure. That's what brought in Adam Soshomale. Mm. So we hope that Gambuje will complete his tenure. But as far as I'm concerned, if I'm hired as a consultant to the APC, I would not have made Gambuje the national chairman of the party because it's not good for the optics of the party. It's not good. It's not good for the optics of the party to to. To, to, to have. And then you now have a situation whereby somebody is the national chairman of the party who has changed the insignia on his cap to that of the to that of the president. Mm. You also have a Senate president who had in his first uh, in his first official promotional video, because that's where I'll call it, in his first official promotional video by his media handlers, it was he also had the a cap which has the insignia of the president. So in South Africa, you know what they call that this called state capture. Hmm. So you know when you see all this, you begin to wonder what kind of um, what kind of checks and balances we'll have in this administration. Yeah, exactly. and what then, kind of checks and, and balances we not, it's would not, have? It's not. It's not. It's not too far away from when the military, the military, you recall during Abacha days when Abacha was trying to transmute himself from being a, 
and military head of state to president, where everybody, every military officer began to wear the lapel that has a bacha to show you that it's, it's in democracy. You need people to challenge your thought in order for you to come up with constructive ideas. And it's constructive ideas that give you the rules of democracy. And isn't that, that the whole legis concept of having the legislative arm to make sure that the executive arm does not get too puffed up, does not I abuse powers? I, I, haven't you seen, well, haven't you seen the, 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 the screening of the ministerial nominees? You saw you, 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 you watch the screen of the ministerial nominee. Now, when you, when you subjugate and relegate your position and your responsibility to the background, in the process of asserting your authority, asserting your authority as oversight starts with the screen of the minister. But when you are rubbing palms and shaking the hands with the minister during that process, instead of you sending that signal, you are subjugating your authority. So it becomes you become a rubber stamp, you become neglected, you become ignored by 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 by, by the ministers once they are sworn in, because you have not established your authority, you have not laid down the Maka, rather you are you are relating with them as if it's business as usual. God will help them. We keep saying this. Oh well, we, we some of us were not surprised, yeah. Judah Johnson. I mean, we expected they take a bow, and we saw a lot of the take a bow. No, so we no, were not are, surprised are, at all. Yeah, there, there, there are there are there are standard there are standard rule also. For example, if you're a former legislature, mm. it's it, it, it's 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 normal. Those we expect that okay, take a bow is understandable. If a former senator, a senator. That's, oh, take it by fantastic. There's no problem with that. Are you getting my point? Because it's, 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 it's the court, let me put it, it's the court of association, it's the privilege of being a member of the legislature. Are you getting it now? But so doesn't that defeat, that then what is it, you, what, where is the screening part of that? No, no, you, if you, you have to come and take a bow and go, whether you used no, to be, no, is it constitutional though? Is it enshrined in the constitution? No, no, it's, that's why I said that former privilege. members should that, not be grilled. So that we'll know yeah. whether they are qualified for the portfolio that they should be holding. It is, it is believed that if you have held the office, that's why they use the word honorable. And then they use the word distinguished. It's distinguished senator, honorable member. Are you getting it now? It's a privilege. Are you, are you, it's, like, it's like what, right, that it, the privilege that is accorded to a son. Once a son gets to a court, no matter how, if you are the opposing lawyer and you are not a son, the moment the son stands on his feet, you, you keep quiet. You, you take your seat. So there are some privileges mm. in every profession. Yeah. No doubt about that. I okay. understand those privileges being extended to former legislature or sitting legislature, current legislature. I don't expect that to be extended to governors that render their states useless, that, that, that render their states, that render, that made their state ungovernable, that, that have made on awesome on all some uh, statement speeches here and there, I don't expect that. Those should have been screened. Those should have been great. But what did we see? We saw, look, the fact is that the governors, the governors, there's a new kid on the block. In the past, in Nigeria, Nigerian politics used to be controlled by the generals. The errors of the generals are gone. You are now in the areas of the governors. Check every sector. The leader, the, the Senate president, is a former governor. The secretary to the federal government is a former governor. The national chairman of APC is a former governor. Mm -hmm. So check, check how many former governors you have in this new cabinet. Eight nine. Former governors. I think there are nine. nine. Is it eight? It's nine. Nine. Nine, nine. nine former governors in this cabinet. So if you look at the executive, you have former governors. If you look at the legislature, you have former governors. So if you look at the party structure, you have former governors. So in the bureaucracy of government, in the secretary of government office, you have a former governor. So you could see that they are the new kids on the block. And what was their performance or what were their performances when they were governor? Yeah, well, time, so will, we not, the, <laughs> time will not permit us to go any we, further. We live in a country where we reward, we reward, we reward failure. Mm. We reward failure. That's, that's the country we live in. That, <coughs> that's, is, we live in the world. Let me take a word that my son just added. We live in a world where people, where we reward mediocrity. <laughs> That's very sad. <laughs> Meritocracy has been sacrificed. Yeah, let me quickly touch. Let me quickly touch on the Guardian newspaper. We don't have time to analyze it. Just to to just read it out. Nigeria's political dynasties wax stronger 
as poverty deepens. That's the big story on the Guardian newspaper, and details of that will be found on pages four and five. You have contempt charge, NLC threatens strike if summons is not withdrawn, and then Forex challenges high OPEX force and GSK's exit from Nigeria. And Biden calls for immediate release of Bazoum's orders officials out of Niger. So many things on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. So you can pick any of these newspapers and just go through them. They are rich this morning. Thank you so much, Judith Johnson, for your time on of the press this morning. As always, it's it always a delight to have you. Thank you. Okay, so you're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a break and come back with our first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>